Alleluia. Good morning. Alleluia. Yeah, the special teaching is about the Last Supper. Yeah, we want to do it today. And this Last Supper, it's an interesting time when Jesus did it. And he did it with all 12 disciples. With all 12, even one of those disciples will lie to betray him. He did this Last Supper to remember what he did, where he came from. And we want to read the scripture out of 1 Corinthians 11. And the thing is, very often we can do it in a religious way because we are used to do it. We are used to do the Last Supper, the communion, the bread, the wine, we do it. But the Bible is telling us that this is a covenant. It's about a covenant God has given us and we decide to say yes. It's a marriage. It's a marriage we proclaim also this morning. And therefore the Bible is saying, do it seriously. But it's a part of remembering what Jesus did for us. So we can have joy, but in the joy we have to do it with a conscious that is a serious thing. It's a covenant for life. A real covenant for life. <laughs> for life, for your whole life here on earth, but for also for the eternal life. And that is what we are celebrating. Yeah, and I think really um, I can confirm what uh, James told us this morning. This is about uh, really being born again. And if you don't know what this is, I think you shouldn't be coming up here because you should be born again to be part of the Lord's Supper. This is really a very th serious thing, and we will read in a minute what this really has for consequences for people who do not take this serious. And many people inside, yeah, in religion telling you there are no curses. But that scripture we read this morning in 1 Corinthians 11 will show us even by taking the supper, the communion, you can take, get curses if you do it in a wrong way. So there are curses with consequences. So if someone is coming to you and saying there are no curses or no consequences of sinning, take this example and this is for the church because no one outside the church will take communion or <laughs> I, I cannot remember when I have taken communion outside the church so it's inside the church yeah so be smart and be yeah very clear with the scripture and you see it clearly and to be born again means the Holy Spirit is in you and he is showing it to you so if you have Questions, ask the Holy Spirit, and He will re reveal it to you. So the good scripture we read now will show it to you. Yeah. Eleven twenty-three. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup. When he had supped, a saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, 
whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthy eats and drinks damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among, and many are sleep. This means dead. For if we, sh if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Okay. So here we have seen clearly, if we have taken the communion in a wrong way, there could be weakness in our life. There could be sickness in our lives, and then people could have died. So very harsh consequences, or? But we know that in Jesus Christ there is forgiveness. So this does mean examining yourself. So you know, convicted by the Holy Spirit, if there is sin in your life. I do not know, but you know. So therefore, we ask the Lord Jesus now to forgive us all our sins. And if you have done a special sin, a secret thing, only you, yours, and the Lord knows when ask the Lord for forgiveness. Because before we go and sharing the bread and the wine, we, we need to do that. Because we as our pastors are also responsible for that to teach you. Because otherwise if you do not warn, you will be also guilty. Because we did not warn. So sinning has consequences. But the good news is Jesus died at the cross, shared his blood, he went through all the stuff, through all betrayals, for all um, being ashamed, make ashamed by the leaders, being ashamed by his disciples. So he went through all of this for what? That we have a reconciliation with our Father in heaven. So thank you, Lord, what you have done. Hallelujah. What you have done for us. And I thank you for your mercy on us that you have given us this freedom to decide, this liberty to decide to live our lives, that we lay down our lives and live our lives for you, that we can follow your ways in a complete way with a whole, a, all our heart, wholeheartedly. It's not about 50%, it's not about 60% or 99%, the Bible is saying, wholeheartedly. And that is the commitment we give, that is the covenant we went into because we laid down our lives, we crucified our lives. And Father, forgive us all our sins we have done in a conscious way or in a subconscious way. Forgive it. And we forgive also the people who have done wrong to us, who have betrayed us, who have done evil things to us, we forgive them. We decide this morning to forgive them with all our heart, with all our soul and all our mind. And Father God, we are here. We are here this morning because you have called us to be here. You have called us to, to prepare a way for your kingdom, to bring in to your kingdom good fruits. And therefore, Father God, we thank you that this morning is a morning of renewing also this covenant with you. And I pray that you come down with your holy presence, with the Holy Spirit and touches our lives this morning as we dedicate our lives to you in your mighty name. Amen. Amen. So we want to share now the communion together with you. And when we want to do it in this way, that we will give you the bread and the wine, because it's a part of, because I read also this morning that Jesus gave them. He gave them the bread. He gave them the wine. I'm not Jesus, but I want to do it, yeah? 
because it's our heart of serving and that shows the heart of serving also. So that we give it to you and we want that you stand in some small groups together. If a family, four or five people as a family standing together or if you are single or alone here, stand in a group of others with four or five people because of, we think that this is a part of family. Jesus also said, okay, who is your family? You are our family here. We are together here this morning and therefore we shall also share this communion together. Not alone, please stand in small groups, pray a short prayer for each other and have this communion in a fellowship. So we want to do it this way. So we have two plates with a bread and uh, we have some uh, cups uh, with uh, juice, <laughs> not real wine juice, but uh, so we want to do it when you come forward. Maybe we can start with this side, when this side comes here this way and going back with the other way so that we have a, um, a good uh, procedure and no uh, traffic jam at the table. And we, you can sh we share it on both sides of this table. So now you are invited to come and we start this side and then later this side, okay? Good, yeah. when we move the table a little, that you can come. Okay, thank you. So Father God? Yeah, okay. Okay, so Father God, we bless now with bread and we bless with uh, wine and we thank you for that you have shared your precious blood and your body you have given us. And thank you, Jesus, you have a bread of life. And by taking this communion, we receive again this covenant and we thank you for that in your mighty name. Amen. So please come. You can start in the front. Please come forward. So stand together, pray for each other, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. for you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Bread of life in you. Bread of life in you. 
Noch ein paar hinten. Ja. of life and the precious blood of Jesus for you. Bread of life in the blood of Jesus for you. Bread of life in the blood of Jesus for you. Musst du mal was sagen, dass die Leute jetzt reden? Ja, yeah, let's stand together in groups as families and we take the communion together. Hallelujah. Yeah, please. Yeah. Share it now and be blessed now and pray for each other that we receive this covenant and in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let's stand together. Yeah. You want? Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. You want to stand with your family? Thank you, Father. Or Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father God, we.
Christ will glorify you, glorify you, glorify you, glorify you. So he's touching the hearts of the people this morning. He's touching the hearts of the people, Father God in heaven. I pray, I pray, I pray for a new touch, a new touch, a new touch, a new touch. touch. Father God in heaven, that you're setting free, you're setting us free. Father God in heaven, praise you, praise you. We glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you. We glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you, we glorify you, Father God. We glorify you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for a new touch. Thank you, Lord, for a new touch. A new touch. A new touch. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Move on the hearts of the people. Move on the hearts of the men, sending them free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 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 By your Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit here in the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 What you are doing this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your moving. Moving on the hearts of the people. Thank you, Lord. 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 Where the Spirit of God is, where is liberty. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord, for the touching of the heart. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. 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 But we glory. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are so faithful. That you are faithful and showing us your glory and your power. Thank you, Lord, for every healing in this room, for every deliverance in this room, for every dedication in this room. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. And Jesus, we thank you for your precious blood you have given us. You see that our lives are sealed. By the, glory, by the glory and the power of our most almighty God. And Jesus, that you are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And you came from heaven to earth to show us the way. And thank you, Lord, for your obedience you have shown, for your obedience you lift on this earth. And that you have so many, a crowd of believers, a crowd of faith amongst us and around us, a, a cloud of living testimonies. And thank you for every person in this room and also on YouTube, on live stream, for everyone who is watching us, for these precious brothers and sisters. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name and that you bring us together as a family, as warriors in your kingdom, as warriors in your army, as servants in your kingdom. And thank you, Lord, for this, what you are doing this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah.
I just want to do something very quickly. I brought some uh, anointing oil, some olive oil, and I brought some frankincense and myrrh that I brought back from the Holy Land. And we want to do a special service. Yes? <clears throat> now, this this service, what I'm going to do right now, is for the servants of God. If you have been serving God this year, And if you haven't been serving God, which is witnessing to people, even when they're in opposition to hearing, if you're someone that just shuts your mouth and keeps quiet to keep the peace in your backslider family and friends, then this is not for you. This is for the mouth openers, not the mouth shutters. If you're still walking in active sin, this is not for you. You need to repent and make straight the paths of God. If you're still in sin, then you need to go home and make fruits worthy of repentance. That's what John the Baptist said. Go home and prepare fruits worthy of repentance and then come back to the things, to do the things of God. It's not that you're rejected, it's just you need to get your house in order. If you're someone who's praying for the sick, witnessing, casting out demons, under those who believe, these signs will follow. Under those who believe, believe. If you're a believer, these signs will follow. You will cast out demons. You will lay hands on the sick that they will recover and get well. You'll witness for Jesus. That's what believers do. If that's not what you're doing, you're not a believer and you need to become a believer need to become a believer. You don't have to be doing it all the time, but you need to be doing it some of the time. Every one of you, including me, knows somebody who has demons. Huh? You know some sick people, and you see some sick people. You know some unsaved people, even people that don't want to hear you, but they're committing suicide. They have a rope around their neck, they have a gun at their head, and you need to talk them out of not doing it. You're the light of the world. Don't hide your light underneath the bed. Make full proof of your ministry. This is a commandment by God, not a suggestion. Check yourself out. Are you a real believer? Because only a real believer is going to make it. Only real believers. By the fruit, we will know it. Not by the church, we will know it. Not by the pastor, we will know it. No. This is not pastoranity. This is not churchianity. This is Christianity. So if you're not doing those things, and you have not been doing those things, and you're not going to do those things, then you should just stay in your chair. Because this is serious work, just like that was. Over there it said what they just said in communion was examine yourself, which is just all the things that I just said. Examine yourself. 
and repent. Because if you don't, and you go up and you do something religious, as the Zerns just said, many get sick and many die early. You don't want to play with this God. He's not somebody to play around with. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, not demonic fear, reverential fear. Yes? Huh? I just read you a couple of scriptures. Now, if you have been a backslider in your works, and you still would like a little of this, you could if you won't lie to God. If you'll make a commitment to God and say, Lord, I want to serve you. 2023 is going to be the new me. The new me in 23. Then, and you give a commitment to God, I'm going to start producing fruits to save yourself and others. Then we'll anoint you because today is an anointing for service, for a step up in the anointing for service. I'm going to, I'm going to offer you what we do with pastors when we ordain them today. Nothing too complicated. The most complicated thing is your heart. Your heart. Attitude, yes? Okay. So, let's go over to that scripture that the Zerns was saying. We won't be long First Corinthians 11. Verse 27. Yes? Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, meaning you're in sin. Unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Therefore, you should examine yourself before you do any kind of holy thing with God. You should never even prayer, pray without asking forgiveness for sin. Because John 9, 31 says God will not hear a sinner. So if you're in sin and you're sitting there praying for five hours to God, he don't hear nothing. It's rejected. It's all rejected. And you can fool yourself. I just did... 10 hours of prayer and fasting, and God said, really, where was that? I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. God will not hear a sinner. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, the hand of God has not grown short. His ear can still hear. His eyes can still see. But sin and iniquity puts a separation between us and God. We need to bring that back together. Do you see? Repent and make straight the paths of God. It's not so complicated. It's not about guilt. It's not about shame. It's not about condemnation. It's just about getting your life right for yourself. And for the Lord. You see? It's between you and God. It's not between you and the pastor. It's between you and the Lord. Uh, look at verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, God doesn't need to judge us. But when you are judged, God will chasten you. God will correct you. 
The book of Revelation says, as many as Jesus loves, he will rebuke you and spank you to correct you, just as you would if you love your children. If you love your children, you don't let them run around like crazy, stupid, fool animals. You raise up a child in the way he will go. This is how God does with us. Everyone goes through the refiner fire. You see? Everyone will be tested in salt and in fire. This is the word of God. Judge yourself. Judge yourself. This is what God loves. Don't condemn yourself. Judge yourself. Examine your behavior. If it's wrong, if you're involved with something, trap of Satan or demons, get rid of it. Get yourself out of the trap. You can change. You can change. Verse 29. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks damnation. What's damnation? You go to hell. Damnation to himself because you don't discern that you're doing this with the Lord, with his body. They think, well, this is just a religious thing. This is just a church thing. No. This is something in the spirit of God. The spirit of God. If you come up and you do any of these things, Jesus is with you. The Bible says, if I'm in Christ, Christ is in me. So whatever you do, you make Jesus do it. You look at pornography, you, you make the Lord look. You commit an adultery, you take Jesus into the adulterer's bed. The Bible says, should someone of the Lord join themselves to a harlot? No, God forbid. For don't you know, a man joined to a harlot, the spirit of whoredoms become one flesh. You become one flesh with demons. You don't want to do that. You want to become one flesh with Jesus. Verse 30, for this cause many become weak. Weak. You can't go through this kind of spiritual warfare that is required now and be a weak person. You will be defeated. You need strength in the Holy Ghost. You need the anointing. The anointing. Do you want the anointing? Amen. What? Let's see. One, two, three. How many people want the anointing? Yes. What do you want it for? For what? 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 Yeah, because that's why God gives you the anointing. It's not as though you can feel good in the service. That's your reward. That's the part of the anointing. That's the reward. But the anointing is for service that brings reward. Do you see? A backslider cannot be blessed. For this cause, many become weak and sickly, and many die early. You don't want that. You would be surprised if God opened your eyes into the churches and saw how many people came up to be religious, little play game with God, what their sicknesses are really about. Why they so weak. Why Christians are always saying, well, I would quit, but I'm so weak. I would stop sinning, but I'm so weak. Where did the weakness come from? I can't resist temptation because I'm so weak. Oh, really? Where did it come from? I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Is God strengthening you? If not, you'll be weak. Are you an unhappy person? There has to be something wrong in your life because the joy of the Lord brings your strength. If you don't have the joy of the Lord... Joy of the Lord comes from service. Matthew 24. Matthew 13. Serving God brings joy. 
Not serving God brings demons because rebellion is witchcraft. You get it? You get it? This, this idea of communion is not an, a new thing. It's not even a Jesus thing. I, you think it's a Jesus thing. It's not, it's not a Jesus thing. It's a God thing. It's a God thing that Jesus brought as a remembrance. Look at Leviticus 22, 16. Are you excited? Are you ready for an upgrade? You want to go from economy to first class seating? Ah. Uh, Leviticus 22. Verse 16. Verse 15. You will not profane the holy things of the children of God, which they offer to the Lord, or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things, for I am the Lord that sanctifies them. There's the first communion. There's the first communion. Ah, uh, you know, Elijah was feeding the thousands, hundreds, right? He multiplied. Jesus came and he, and he did it later. Look at Leviticus 19, verse 2. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of God and say to them, You will be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. God is holy, therefore be ye holy. Well, I, I'm only human. I'm only human. That's what Satan will say. If you have a demon, the demon will say, well, I'm only human. If you are human, you're not saved. Are you a human? I'm not a human. I'm an alien. Are you an alien? From another world called heaven. The Bible says when you come to Christ, you're made a new creation. You are a new creature. You are no longer human. Huh? You're no longer human. So you can't say, well, I'm only human. You do not have the sin nature like the religious pastors tell you. That's a lie. You ask forgiveness from your sin. When you come to Jesus, you are made a new creation. You no longer have the sin nature, although usually people have their demons that they brought to Christ with them that we then have to cast out. You think you have the fallen nature? Then you're not born again. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelations, by the sin of one came death. The first Adam. But the second Adam brought life. Now you have a right to the tree of life. Not just the tree of good and evil. You now have had the tree of life opened up to you. You're no longer under the sin nature. Adam and Eve were not under the sin nature. They weren't under the fallen nature and they sinned. Why? They started taking advice from Satan and demons. And this is the same thing that will pollute you. Taking advice from these demons. Look at Ezekiel 44. Six 
through 8. Ezekiel 44, 6 through 8. Thou shalt say unto the rebellious people, unto the rebellious people of God, thus says the Lord, O oh, you people of God, you're involved in abominations in that you have brought into my church, you have brought into my church people who are not saved, people who are not of God, and they're coming into the church acting like they're people of God. Uncircumcised in their flesh, you bring them into my church and they pollute it. Polluted people pollute the church because they don't take God seriously. They don't take these things seriously. They come to church, but they're walking in a life with demons. They're still doing all these demon things, and then they come to church to show that they're God's people. And church don't prove that. Demons came to church today. Demons are in here right now listening. Huh? They're here right now. And they're hoping that they don't get cast out. They're hoping that. But that's a pointless hope if you come here. There's no hope in that. That's a fool's hope. Because that's what we do. We're obedient to Christ. We cast out demons. We heal the sick. We preach the word. We lead people to the light away from the darkness. How about you? They have brought them into my house. They come to do communion. They come to offer bread and the blood but they are living in a broken covenant because they are in sin. They have not kept charge of the holy things of God. They have not set people who are keepers and advisors to keep the church clean. All of this is talking about communion. So you can see that this goes, this goes much deeper than what, than what you think. Look at verse 23 through 24. My teachers will teach my people, not the world, will teach my people the difference between the holy and the demonic. And they will teach my people to discern, you need spiritual discernment, to discern between godly clean and demonic unclean spirits, to learn the difference. And people, this will bring a controversy. They shall stand in judgment, they shall judge according to my judgments, they will keep my word in the church, and they will keep the church day holy. You will not come close to dead people. How about you? Are you walking with the dead? That's the end time temple. Do you know what that is? That's the temple that they're getting ready to build right now in Israel, the new temple, where the beast and the Antichrist will come to stop. It hasn't been built yet. This is not some old thing. This is the book of Revelations, where the beast and the Antichrist will come. So what are you going to do when the beast and the Antichrist comes? If you're weak, you will be defeated. The book of Revelation says he comes to make war against the saints and power will be given to him to defeat the church. And the dragon comes to fight the remnant. 
who keep the commandments of God and walk in testimony. Mainstream church will be defeated. And it will be, God will put in their hearts to submit to the Antichrist. Because they'd already been doing it, but not in the remnant. The remnant will be marked. Are you marked? Have you taken the mark? I took the mark. But not the mark of the beast. I've taken the mark of Jesus Christ. I've taken the mark of the remnant. In the book of Revelations, it says, hold back the judgments of God until I can mark the remnant. For they will not be attacked, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I don't have to fear evil. Jesus said, behold, the master of this world is coming, Satan, but he has nothing in me. He has nothing in me. This is where you need to get, where he has nothing in you. And this is called deliverance. Let's go over to Leviticus 8, 14 through 24. This is my last scripture. Leviticus 8. Fourteen. He brought the bullock, the blood. The Bible tells us we no longer get involved with the blood of goats and the blood of animals. For Jesus has become our offering, our kinsman redeemer. It is now done through the blood of Jesus. Do you understand? But these things are still just as real in the spirit. These are spiritual things. He brought the blood for the sin offering. And they put their hand upon the carabao. And they confessed their sin. The people confessed their sin. Say, Holy Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand in the gap for my family all the way back to the beginning of time. And myself, I ask forgiveness for all sins, all iniquities, anything that God did not like. I break the curse. I renounce every demon and all rebellion to God. And he took the blood, verse 19, and he took the blood, the anointing, and he put it, he put it on the horns of the altar, which represents the place of knowledge of preaching, of the things of God. And he washed the inside and the legs of the animal before they would make a sacrifice they would take the animal and they would cut out the inside. Why? From everything that it had brought in from the world. They would remove it and then they would wash it with the water, with the laver, the holy, what would be real holy water. They washed the inside of the animal to remove spiritual pollution that came from the physical, spiritual world. Then they would wash the legs, they would cut off the feet, the feet that had walked in the world, and then they would wash the legs from the dust of the world. Jesus says, shake off the dust. Shake off the dust of the things of the world. Everything 
Here's the thing, my friend, for what we're going to do. Everything that may be a focus in your mind right now or in your heart that is of the world, you must renounce it and let it go. It cannot come up here with you. Don't come up here thinking about your laundry. Don't come up here thinking about your cousin at the lunch today, Christmas party. Don't come up here with any of that nonsense. When you come up here, you are focused just on the Lord. I just heard the Lord say, I will give a word to many that he will speak that he will speak to the faithful ones. You need, this is why you have to let it go and you have to open up your eyes of understanding, open up the eyes of your heart, ask the Lord to open up your spiritual ears that God can speak to you and give you a word for your life today and that he can touch you and anoint you. And this is the same for all of you out there on, on uh, live stream land. There's no distance in the spirit. You can be part of this today. All you have to do when we come up is, you're there at home, raise up your hands, put one hand on your screen, on your phone, on your laptop, and open up to the Lord. There is no distance in the spirit. Yes? Yes? Look, and they brought the other ram, the ram of consecration, and they laid hands on the head of the ram. One of the goats, they confess iniquity, which is excuse-making. This is the scapegoat, La Azazel, and they release it, making excuses. They lay hands. They say, I'm sorry, making excuses. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask forgiveness for all the excuses I have made for wrong behavior and not serving God. And then they laid hands on the second goat and they confess sin and then they sacrifice the goat. Because without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sin. They let go the excuses and they kill the sin. Do you got it? Say in Jesus' name, I let go of all the excuses and I confess every sin and I ask the Lord in the name of Jesus to cover it with the blood of Jesus. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus to anoint this oil for healing, for deliverance, for a fresh touch by God, for the anointing of the service of God representing the blood of Jesus, representing the blood of Jesus and the living water of the Holy Spirit. And we command the enemy to see that and feel that and that they cannot escape the idea that this is holy by God. Anoint this, Father. Healing, deliverance, salvation. A new, fresh touch. Today. Unto the dedicated ones. Unto the committed ones who really have a heart for serving God. Is that you? What? Yes. What? Are you sure that's you? Yes. Verse 23. And then they took it and they put it on the tip of the dedicated servant's right ear, on the right thumb, and on the right big toe of their foot. If you, if you are one of those dedicated ones, Take your right shoe off. Come on. If that's you, take off your right shoe.
Can you guys move this back? Come on. If that's you, if you want half an anointing, leave your sock on. If you want the full anointing, take your sock off. Huh? Huh? Are you ready? Are you ready? This is the real deal right here, my friend. If that's you, then you come up here in a line, okay? Like this. Like that. Can you move this thing out of here? Yes? If I was you, I'd run up here. Hallelujah. Come on up. If you're serious. All right. You two can help. We'll just keep moving these. Boing, boing, boing. You know, popping them on their heads, and then we'll. Father, we ask for a fresh touch today, mighty moving of the Holy Spirit today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes? Where's Elmer? Here, why don't you, uh, whoever we, wherever, I'm just going to go where the Lord leads me, okay? So wherever we go, you just stand behind him and... So, you know, okay, because we're just going to go where the Lord tells us to go. So you guys are going to have to move fast, and you'll have to move fast to get behind. Yes? Yes. Are you excited? Yes. You got a high expectation today? Yes. Huh? Are you sure? Yes. You sure? We got some paper towels up here? Yes? Huh? All right. Put out your, put out your right hand. Put out your right hand.
Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus. Fresh touch, new excitement for God, 
New excitement for God. New excitement. Feel that fire, girl. Feel that fire. Feel that fire. Feel that excitement for Jesus 2023. Feel that excitement for God. Excitement. Excitement. Yes, Lord. More. More. Pour in more. I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, the full portion, God. Oh. Oh, I give you praise. Dodge. 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 Touch a new you, a new you. Touch, 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 touch a new you. Touch, 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 touch in Jesus' name. A new. Whole new you, a new you. Touch, 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 touch. Fire, 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 fire. In the Holy Ghost, fire in the Holy Ghost. Touch, touch, touch. New you, new you. Fire pour it out while I pray. New excitement, new excitement, new excitement in Jesus. New excitement, Daddy. New excitement. Fire! Touch, 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 touch. That's right. That's right. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A whole new touch to the servants of God. Oh, I'll give you praise. Touch, 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 touch. In Jesus' name, a whole new you. In Jesus' name, Father, touch the hungry ones. Touch the hungry ones. Touch the hungry ones. Touch me. Oh, fire, 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 fire. In the name of Jesus, more. Come on, more. More, 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 more. In the name of Jesus, more, more. Oh, Lord, more. Pour it out. Pour it out. Fire, 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 fire. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I give you praise, Father. I lift you up. I lift you up. I lift you up, Daddy. I lift you up. I lift you up. Let the fire come down. I lift you up. I lift you up. Touch, 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 touch. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fresh touch. Fresh touch. Jesus, in the name of 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 Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, a whole new, a whole new move of your Holy Spirit. Fill it up, here's my cup. Fill it up. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Fire, Lord God. Fire. 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 Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise for the servants of God, Daddy. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Fire, 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 fire in the Holy Ghost. Fire in the Holy Ghost. Fire in the Holy Ghost. New excitement. New high expectation. New high expectation. New expectation. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, touch, touch, be healed in the name of Jesus, be healed to the glory of God, be healed, all that pain leaves the body, in Jesus' name, all of it goes now, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Father, give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise, I give you praise, touch, 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 oh, touch, fire, 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 fresh, fire in the Holy Ghost, fire in the Holy Ghost, come on, oh, God, we want to serve you, we're so excited, we're so excited, we're so excited, in the Holy Spirit, that's right, that's right, open your heart, open your heart, honey, open your heart to the Lord, that's right, that's right, God will touch you, God will touch you, that God will move on your life, touch, touch, touch your future servants, Father God, touch all your future servants, Lord God, oh, Daddy, oh, Daddy, come on, give me that, touch. in the name of Jesus, Touch! Fire! 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 Fire in the name of Jesus! Oh, glory to God! That's right. That's right. All of it leaves. All of it leaves. Curses go out and Holy Ghost comes in. Receive it. That's right. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Fresh touch by God. Fresh touch by God. That's right. That's right, I give you praise, Father, I give you praise. 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 Touch the whole family, Daddy. Touch the whole family. In Jesus' name. Fire in the Holy Ghost. Fire in the Holy Ghost. Fire in the Holy Ghost. A new touch for the whole family. I lift you up. I lift you up. Oh, fresh touch, Father. Glory. 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 More. More. 